these lies my whole life. It's time for you to make a choice. The premise of Uglies is adapted from Scott Westerfeld's popular young adult series of the same name and centers around a future society where everyone is forced to undergo cosmetic surgery to fit a rigid standard of beauty. But of course, all that beauty and perfect health comes at a cost, a cost that feels heavier than the benefits it provides. Directed by Joseph McGinty Nickel a.k.a. Meg G., who is also known for helming the 2000 film Charlie's Angels, tries his best to breathe life into Westerfeld's novel and succeeds in most parts. But this is not a review video, so I will cut to the chase. In this video, I will first brief you about the world of uglies and how it works, before exploring the major conflict between the good guys and the bad guys, which is indispensable to have a comprehensive understanding of the ending and the other burning questions that the film left us with. So, without further ado, let's begin. Before we get into it, do us a solid. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing. It's a small click for you, but it means a lot to us. Thank you. All my life, I wanted to be pretty. Everything you need to know about the world of uglies? Well, Uglies is set in a dystopian future, a future in which humanity's greed for natural resources led to its exhaustion. Naturally, wars followed and the world went to hell. Then came a new breed of scientists and bioengineers who created a flower called the White Tiger Orchid, which supposedly served as a source of infinite energy. Although the power problem was now solved, humanity still continued to divide itself into countries, clans, castes, and classes. That's the folly of humans, I believe. So, in order to ensure that everyone was equal, they started to perform experiments on people with the end goal of making everyone pretty. The pretties would have to undergo a surgery at the age of 16. That would change their physical as well as psychological state, making them look and feel good inside out. Of course, this came at a cost. Now, in this strange world, Tally Youngblood, a girl who desperately wants the surgery to become pretty, comes up at the top as the protagonist. She is someone who does not like the fact that she is an ugly. Now you must note that being an ugly does not necessarily mean that you look bad. It just means that you have not undergone the procedure which makes you the most perfect form of yourself. Young children until the age of 11 are called littlies, after which they are called uglies. At the age of 12, uglies like Tally are sent to Uglyville, where they attend middle and high school and wait till they become 16 so that they can undergo the procedure. In fact, during their years at this prison of a school, they are asked to address themselves based on their physical imperfections. For instance, Tally was squint, Shay was skinny, and Ferris was nose because of his peculiarly large nose. This helps the authorities and people like Dr. Cable, the big bad of the story, to ensure that the uglies anticipate their respective massive operations that would make them perfect as far as beauty and health are concerned. Learned. These people do not have to work and all they are expected to do is have fun and maintain an extravagant social life. Sounds like something most people would want, but all of this comes with a downside. Let's check it out from the perspective of the movie to have a more comprehensive understanding about the plot, and in turn, the really cool ending, which totally sets up the franchise for a second movie. What was the conflict between the good guys and the bad guys? You see, Tally and Paris were best buds since day one at the School for Uglies. They promised to remain best friends and even had something of a blood pact to seal the bond. Paris had suffered a wound on his palm and Tally cut herself to match the scar. Years passed and the two became close until it was time for Paris to undergo the procedure. Tally was three months younger to Paris and had to wait. The two of them promised not to have their scars removed from their palms after they turned pretty, but that did not go as per plan. When Tally met Paris a month after his procedure, he was pretty indifferent to Tally, nearly disgusted by who she still was, and ugly. To make things worse, the authorities found out that an ugly was present at the pretty town, so she was chased, but they could not catch her because Shay, aka Skinny, came to Tally's rescue. The two of them grew close and became best friends, which was when Shay revealed to Tally about the existence of the Smoke, a rebel group that opposed the authority of Dr. Cable and the whole ugly vers pretty divide. These guys supported the ideas like freedom, creativity, nature, etc., and Shay had been greatly influenced. She planned to escape Uglyville and join the ranks of the Smoke, which was led by a young leader named David. Shay tried her best to convince Tally to come along, but the latter refused, and Shay left alone. However, Dr. Cable got to know about Tally's involvement and used Tally's unflinching desire and need for the procedure against her. 
cable blackmailed Tally into infiltrating the ranks of the smoke and finding a supposed weapon that David and company had been building to destroy the new pretty town. The young girl did as she was asked, but of course the smoke was nothing like she had imagined or expected. It was a community of happy people, living together in harmony and peace without an ounce of differences or discrimination, something that deeply impressed Tally. In fact, her heart turned and she decided to remain with the rebels. As an act of defiance against Dr. Cable, Tally put the tracker necklace given by Cable, but its destruction actually alerted Cable of the location of the smoke. She came in with a small army and destroyed the rebel base before killing David's father. Speaking of him, you should know that David's parents Maddie and Az used to be scientists working for Cable, who realized that Cable's procedures were actually intended to create lesions in the brains of the pretties, which made them mindless. Basically, they lost their abilities to make independent decisions and were also left bereft of free thoughts. Naturally, they soon left the program and escaped into the wilderness to start a family, which is how the smoke came into existence. Now, their only goal was to create a cure for the pretties. Anyway, what happens next is that Cable takes every rebel along with her to New Pretty Town, where she wanted to turn them all. Only Tally and David remained. Did they find the cure? By now, David learns of Tally's treachery, but she manages to convince him to let her come along. The way she does that was quite silly, to be honest. The dude was like he could not trust her, and she goes, Oh, you don't have to trust me, just follow me. I mean, what the hell is that supposed to even mean? Following someone blindly or otherwise needs a degree of trust, right? But, okay, these are young adults from the future. I really can't say much. Anyway, they are a bit late in their attempt to save everyone because Shay had already been turned into a pretty. The girl had always wanted to stay away from the procedure, but after it, she could not stop obsessing over herself. As feisty and strong-willed as she was once upon a time, Shay was now happy and content being a beautiful, mindless girl. But the good part was that no one else was converted and David's mother, Maddie, managed to grab the supposed cure from Dr. Cable's procedure room. Now they could build the cure soon enough and Shay would have been the first test subject to have her pretty mind return to its original form, but Shay was not really interested. She refuses the cure. Although the others wanted to force Shay into it, Maddie stopped them, saying that this is what separated the smoke from people like Cable. I mean, Cable would force people into the surgery and all, but Maddie would not want to test an untested drug on an unwilling subject. Very noble of Maddie, I believe. Why did Tally offer to sacrifice? And what's the importance of her scar? Well, Tally had a solution to it. She offered to go to Cable and ask her for the procedure. Tally knew that Cable could pretty much kill her, and even if she did not, Tally would lose her mind after the procedure. However, Tally convinced David and others that she was stronger than that, that she would consent to the cure even after getting turned into a pretty because her mind was stronger than the likes of Shay and Paris. It all goes as per plan, well, nearly as per plan, and the final scene shows Tally in her new avatar, walking through her new and lavish high-rise apartment. She now had much longer hair, a perfectly symmetrical face with the glow of angels. The computer tested her for any discomfort after her surgery, but everything seemed normal and she seemed happy and at peace. But the final shot of Tally's beautiful hand showed that the scar she had inflicted upon herself as a child was still there. She did not get it removed as Paris did. It meant that she had not lost her mind and remembered who she was, why she did what she did, and how she ended up as a pretty. It meant that Tally was ready to take the cure when David brought it to her at New Pretty Town. Furthermore, before David and Tally parted ways, he asked her how he would recognize her, or at least that she still had a bit of her past self in her. She tells him that she would leave him a sign, a sign of something that was still broken in her perfect body. This is where Tally's scar finds its importance. It was proof that she did not want to be picture perfect and that she had embraced her scars and came to love them because they kept her grounded in reality, grounded in who she was before she underwent the life-changing surgery. What was the fate of Paris? Did he survive? When Tally refuses Dr. Cable's request to bring Shay back from the smoke, the doctor pulls out her trump card, Paris. As Tally's best friend, Paris was the one person who could convince her to betray Shay. Although Paris succeeded, their conversation caused him to break free from the mindless state pretties are kept in, if only for a moment. Recognizing Paris's potential, Dr. Cable puts him through another transformation, turning him into a special, a superhuman soldier. Unlike pretties whose minds are kept passive and 
content, specials are made more aggressive and dangerous. This change sets up a fierce confrontation between Paris and David, as Paris is still under the city's control despite Tally's attempts to reach him. Their battle ends with Paris falling off the dam, leaving his fate uncertain. However, specials are nearly indestructible, with reinforced skeletons and rapid healing abilities, which leaves a glimmer of hope that Paris survived. If there's a sequel, it might just reveal that Paris made it through, especially since he had just started to remember who he really was before his fall. How does Uglies set up a sequel for the franchise? The ending of Netflix's Uglies leaves the door open for a potential sequel, but it doesn't necessarily require one. By showing Tally as a pretty with her scar, it hints that she may get the cure and spark a revolution. However, in the original trilogy by Scott Westerfeld, Uglies is followed by pretties and specials, and Tally's journey continues with more dramatic twists. A second movie could dive deeper into her life as a pretty and the struggles that come with it. Westerfeld later expanded the series with a fourth book, Extras, and a spin-off series released between 2018 and 2022. One of the main questions at the end of Uglies is how much of the real tally remains, as the brain lesions are still in place despite her scar symbolizing resistance. A sequel would explore whether the cure works, the risk of permanent brain damage, and Tally's new experiences in New Pretty Town. There's plenty of story left, with more invasive operations and challenges to come. Marvelous Verdict Does Uglies Defy Its Own Cause? Uglies, directed by McGee, delivers a dystopian tale that feels more confused than compelling. Unfortunately, the film stumbles in its execution, leaving a lot of potential untapped. One of the most puzzling aspects of the film is the casting of Laverne Cox as Dr. Cable, the ruthless enforcer of these oppressive beauty standards. While Cox is a talented actor, her portrayal of a character obsessed with enforcing conformity through surgery feels uncomfortably tone-deaf, especially considering her real-life role as a prominent trans woman advocating for self-acceptance. Her lines, delivered with authoritarian intensity, feel more like caricature than commentary, which undermines any attempt the movie may have had at being subversive or thought-provoking. Visually, Ugly's struggles to stand out. The design is bland, with uninspired brutalist architecture and a futuristic aesthetic that feels generic at best. The action sequences, especially those involving hoverboards, fall flat due to laughable CGI that wouldn't look out of place in a video game from a decade ago. One of the few moments of levity comes when Tally stumbles upon a conveniently placed bungee jacket sign in the midst of an escape, but the scene feels more Looney Tunes than clever. Overall, Uglies fails to live up to its intriguing concept, offering little in the way of visual appeal or thoughtful critique. Instead, it plays out as a dull, uninspired take on a future where beauty is forced upon society without ever truly exploring the deeper implications of its premise. It's a missed opportunity that leaves viewers wondering what could have been. But hey, that's just me. I would love to know what you have to say about the film. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.